Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Saturday, August 11th at 11.28 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at NASA data. Now, take note the fact that the black areas are missing data. Now, these are the hottest places on Earth, as has been recently claimed by NASA, NOAA, and others some of these regions with no data. I'll just let it play through. Regions in blue and purple are below freezing, which is more than half of the map, even through summer. There's your global warming. Look at how cold Greenland remains throughout the year. Minus 20 for most of the time. And look at the amount of missing data, even up in the cold regions. Plenty of opportunity for fraud and obfuscation of the truth. Our genetic ancestors died due to climate change and laziness. We'll get to that. National Weather Service, Weather Ready Nation map. Dangerous heat wave and fire threats extend from the west to the northern plains. Heavy rainfall possible in Texas on Sunday, as we reported on yesterday. Up to 10 inches of rain in some portions here. South Central, a little bit west south. We also have potential from Long Island up through Connecticut into Massachusetts of heavy rain over the next 48 hours. Heads up for flash floods in your region. Costly hailstorms are rapidly increasing. Here's what the weather community is doing about it they're putting insurance adjusters in your area on time. Can you believe the business model? They're not suggesting you build better houses. They're just getting you better claims so you can put in more crappy roofs to get more damage by hail. Now, according to this author, they're doing a lot because they're helping humanity with their insurance claims. How about you build roofs out of metal that don't get ripped apart, you idiots? This is the Watcher's News Brief for August 11th. It is chock full of earth-changing facts, and apparently the satellite does not want to download for us. So let's just parse these and we'll come back to the Watcher's News Brief. Heavy thunderstorms leave parts of New York City underwater. Parts of New York on the morning of August 11th causing power outages and major flooding on the Upper East Side and Bronx. You want to see the video? Click on it. Intense storm dumps 400 millimeters. That's 15.7 inches per hour on Slovenia. Additional hailstorms as large as 3 to 4 centimeters, 1.57 inches, did a significant damage to vineyards. 400 millimeters an hour? Are you kidding me? Please note this amount is still not confirmed as it is totally ridiculous. Now, if it is confirmed, we have the data. Shallow M.51 M51 earthquake hits capital near Albania. This is a very rare region. Boom. And it's a big boom for Albania. I'm sure it got some knickers in a bunch. Authorities say some buildings were damaged. The quake was not felt strongly in Tirana, most of the country, as well as Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Bosnia. The quake was followed by 15 aftershocks. Record rainfall hits parts of Myanmar. Cosmic ray flux much. Four inches of rain fell in two hours. Moderately strong strombolian activity at Mount Etna. I'm getting hungry. Look at the glorious photos. I didn't expect such coverage. Whew. That looks like a hot ball of fire. Sinkhole swallows six cars in Lancaster, PA. There's limestone underneath them cars. And that means caverns. And when you have cosmic ray flux, limestone, and caverns, phew, that's tonight's first boom. Wait for it. Oh, please. Boom. Yes. That is tonight's first boom. It's a key boom. <laughs> the cause of the sinkhole is still unknown. Yeah, that's called a void in the earth. Uh, groundwater makes a big hole in the limestone. And then there's a sinkhole, especially out in Lancaster. <laughs> Wow, they should have called a geologist. This is coming from the Herald Sun, and there's pictures of people on a ski lift in the snow. But this has nothing to do with snow. Record rainfall in almost two months falls overnight. We're talking about wild weather. Has Lash Melbourne this afternoon with hail and heavy rain falling across the city. 
hail pelted suburbs including Yarraville, Kingsville, Footscray, Montrose, and other crazy named cities. After temperatures plummeted to just 7C in the city. Now, this is drastic. That's a 13C drop in just 24 hours for a high. The Bureau of Meteorology senior forecaster Richard Carolyn earlier today said it has been the wettest since June 17th. And that's a boom for the bomb. Heads up. Boom. We don't like the bomb. We like the rain. Kerala hits worst floods in almost 100 years, facing worst in history. This is coming out of India. These guys look pissed. Well, he's happy. He's pissed. This is the happy side and the piss side. It's like good cop, bad cop. You know what I mean? Boom. Cosmic Ray Flux much. Kabini Dam sets new discharge record at 82,000 Cusacks. And no one even knows what a Cusack is. Whew. That's a shit ton of water. Kabini Dam in Bechalalahini, India, has set a new discharge record of 82,000 Cusacks of water, the highest outflow from the dam since commissioned in 1974. That means they're damn near breaking this mother and that's a boom check out how high the greenland ice is <laughs> god it's melting over there hurry up it's melting in greenland 3.3 in arctic village just popping off in alaska and we have bizarre quakes 4.2 up in the arctic we have the known volcanic mid-ocean ridge 5.3 north of svalbard here emanating huge amounts of uh, magma into the water, probably. More mid-ocean ridge activity down 5.3 in the Atlantic Ridge. The rare Albanian quake. Mid-ocean ridge activity 5.4 Macquarie Island. Heads up, New Zealand. 4.5 Riverton. 5.0 La Esperance Rock. Check out the depth of the 5.0 in Tonga. Not to be held unprecedented 4.7 in east team are looking for a large quake in indonesia to pop off at any time heads up Whew. and we are waiting for an eight magnitude or greater in the next four to six weeks we're going to be keeping an eye on it thousands evacuated from tiny vanuatu island as volcanic ash rains down on everything we predicted five months ago it was a bad decision to move people back and like other predictions, we were correct. A massive humanitarian crisis is unfolding on the remote island of the Pacific Ocean after Ambe erupted, sending a thick ash bucketing down everything in sight. Thousands of people on Ambe, the tiny idyllic island in the South Pacific nation of Vanuatu, have entered hell and are now being ordered to evacuate as we suggested they should have never returned after the volcano at the center of the island begins to spew out thick ash which has rained down on villages, blacked out the sun, ruined crops, and totally fluxed everyone. The volcano has been erupting in bursts since September as cosmic rays reach unprecedented levels, heating the silicious magma in the chamber below this volcano. New UNICEF report this week revealed that the situation was becoming increasingly dire for island inhabitants after a surge in volcanic activity. As predicted here... They should have never let people go back to that island. Local media reports that all roads to the west of the island are cut and massive mud flows have washed away many roads. People are waiting to be rescued. Pathetic. Those are the authorities that you're counting on in a future that no one can predict. Unprecedented California super volcano found with 240 cubic miles of magma swirling underneath of it. Now... For a comparison, less than one cubic mile of magma was ejected during the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. So an eruption out of Long Valley Caldera would be unprecedented and everyone would be fluxed. <laughs> totally. Now this is the Long Valley Caldera area here. And with new modern techniques, they have been able to ascertain that the 240 cubic miles of magma underneath of this caldera are partially molten and active. And if this were to erupt, we would be fluxed. Now, there is no eminent eruptive activity, but there is uptick and it should be watched closely. This could belch out billions of tons of superheated gas and smoke and is one of the biggest worries as we progress 
into these cosmogenic events called the Grand Solar Minimum and the waning magnetosphere and the end of the interstadial all coinciding at the same time. It's bad news for the empire, bad news for humanity. And what you're looking at is the ash plume from the last Long Valley Caldera eruption, which covered most of those states, and at least a foot of ash. We're talking over 700,000 years ago, and there's nothing to worry about currently because there is no imminent eruption. But we're going to be watching this area closely. At any moment, things could change. And if you watch the channel, you will be... Yeah, you'll get the, the latest breaking information. Long Valley Caldera is not going to erupt overnight. It will take a matter of weeks and months to progress to eruptive nature. And we'll know it because we watch it closely. Worldwide Okina News update. We have Sangay, Yasur, and Sabankaya coming in just today. Some new names to the list. As well as Karaminsk in the uh, Kamchakta, Popocatapeto, Krakatau, Dukono, and Reventador. Now, Krakatau we're watching closely because that's Krakatoa. And guess what? There's weird, weird volcanoes erupting across the solar system, not just on Earth. <laughs> I'll leave you links to that. This is some special footage that we're going to just watch real quick. This is an August 5th episode from Krakatau. Now, this is a tiny little caldera sitting in the hole. This hole around it is the hole form from Krakatoa. And Krakatoa is starting to grow up. And that's an angry amount of activity and ash coming out of this volcano. And I believe it's just getting started. That's a heads up. The ARRL K7RA solar update came out yesterday. Spaceweather.com reported August 8th that solar minimum conditions are in effect. The sun has been without sunspots for 39 of the past 42 days. To find a similar stretch of blank suns, you have to go back to 2009 when the sun was experiencing the deepest solar minimum in a century. If you're listening now, you are now surpassing the deepest solar minimum in a century, and you're now in the new deepest solar minimum in a century. And the next cycle will bring the next deepest solar minimum of in over a century, and so on and so forth. By solar minimum cycle 25, you will be in the deepest solar minimum in three centuries. If you want to know the facts, come here. We're looking for increased and unsettled activity from August 16th to 17th, active and disturbed from 19th to 20th. Heads up, my birthday's the 28th. Send me a card. I'll leave you the address below. Forget global warming. Forget the grand solar minimum. Well, that's going to flux us. But what we need to worry about is the magnetosphere. It is in my opinion that this is the biggest game changer as far as the empire goes. As we descend into the grand solar minimum, climate will get wacky and crops will fail. This is going to drive inflation. Fiat currency markets are going to begin to collapse based on a different cycle that has to do with finances as well as the sun and the magnetosphere will wane. And now this may wipe out sections of the power grids, which is going to exacerbate the unrest, which is happening due to inflation and crop loss. The Earth's magnetic field has weakened by 15% over the last 200 years. It has weakened 10% over the last 10. And it is predicted to weaken 10% in an exponential fashion until it crashes towards zero around 2035. The north-south poles are migrating quickly and moving faster than ever. They may flip or they may just go wacky. And if it happens, solar winds could punch holes in the Earth's ozone layer. And if we get a Carrington event during this low magnetosphere period, heads up, Grin! Fry, baby, fry. We're talking EMP. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's not the rotational pole of the Earth. It's Earth's magnetic field that's flipping. So north will still be north and south will be south, but not on a compass.
the planet will not flip. The rotational pull will remain the same. If that were to happen, goodbye. But the magnetic field flipping is also a very bad thing. And here is the information coming from NOAA, Space Weather News, Earth's magnetosphere, to get you in touch with how this is different than the rotational pull. You need to sound smart to win arguments. Now, our genetic ancestors died due to climate change. This was the 100,000-year Milankovitch cycle, the last one. And they're talking about Homo erectus. As they dropped off of a cliff on the 100,000-year cycle, there was massive droughts like we're experiencing now. All the rivers where Homo erectus used to live dried up. And according to this article, they were too lazy to move. Don't be a Homo erectus. Learn about the need to move to a safe area. Solar Grand Minima Preparedness Plan, Little Ice Age Preparedness Plan. This is compiled by James A. Marusek. And this is a treasure trove of prepping information that you need to know. If you need to know where to start, it's here. And this is one of the most comprehensive documents for everything you need to know on how to get started now. Don't wait. You're wasting time. Tiny steps towards self-sufficiency begin now. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance into the future we're headed into. Grow something. Grow food, which grows food justice, which will grow the planet in the future. If we do not save seeds now, all of the big biotech corporations are going to take food from you and you're going to eat what they give you and you're going to like it. 